Hey guys, it's Joel with OTR Consulting, and once again, we're back with our Freight Broker Frequently Asked Questions series, and the thing that I want to talk about today is the typical day in the life of a freight broker or an agent that works for a freight brokerage company. Um, you know, in a lot of these job descriptions, a freight broker is basically described as uh, someone who... Uh, it's essentially a salesman. Sometimes it's described as an operational role, as someone who um, helps fulfill orders for customers. It really just depends on how your company structures their freight brokerage roles. Uh, because different companies have different ways of dividing responsibilities between what they consider the job or the role of a freight broker. And in future videos, we will touch on the different ways that uh, those responsibilities are divided. But in this video in particular, we're going to talk about a freight broker in the, ass in the essence of, let's say, someone who wants to start their own freight brokerage. What are they going to be responsible for on a daily basis when they are doing this on their own? So... <clears throat> Typically, the, the, all right, this industry runs from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So most freight brokers are going to be in the office uh, a little bit before that and a little bit after that, uh, regardless of what time zone they're in. So West Coast brokers tend to come into the office as early as 5, 6 a.m., some of them as early as 4.30 a.m., so that they can be on the ball and ready to go at the same time as their East Coast counterparts. And at the same time, they tend to leave a little bit earlier in the day as well in comparison to their East Coast counterparts. So typically, starting off that day at 7 to 7.30 in the morning, a freight broker is typically going to start their day with planning, first of all. And what you're planning at the beginning of the day are what loads that you currently have to get covered, what loads you currently already have over the road, what loads that you know that your customers have been working on and you're still trying to, uh, or potential customers that you're still trying to land, following up, plan making plans to follow up about that. So. Really, at the beginning of the day, um, successful brokers are just thinking about all the tasks and things that they need to get accomplished for that day so that they could be successful. Because this, this whole thing is uh, it's a continually moving train. And you have to be focused on your long-term success. You have to be focused on your long-term plan. And... A lot of being successful at that is starting with planning at every single day and ending with planning every single day. You know, once the day starts rolling into, let's say, like 7.45 to 8.15, a lot of brokers will begin posting their loads or reaching out to carriers um, that could cover shipments that they currently have. And when I say a load, a load is simply a shipment. A load is an amount of product that needs to be um, sent from point A to point B. So that's just industry terminology. So after they've, after they've done their planning, typically brokers will start um, trying to cover shipments that they have uh, already accepted from their cu customer and also they'll be following up. So after you know they start reaching out to some of their carrier um, partners and um, putting up shipment. When I say posting, I mean um, putting loads onto their load boards and various load boards that are available to them online. And all a load board is is an online marketplace for um, different people in the transportation industry to uh, provide information about shipments that they currently have or trucks. That so after that, brokers are typically going to start following up. They're going to start following up on shipments that they have over the road, trying to get check calls on their uh, carriers to see where their shipments are uh, currently en route. Are they currently good to go for delivery? Have they already made delivery? Are they good to go for pickup? And the brokers are going to be following up with their customers and potential prospects 
just seeing, just following up, letting them know what's going on with shipments, uh, trying to see what potential shipments are in the future, um, learning more information about their prospects that may get them closer to uh, booking that first load for that new client. Uh, and just spending their time reaching back out to people that they currently are working with and that they current and that they future in the future that they hope to do business with. <clears throat> in that process they start calling, but typically after that uh, right after that follow-up period, right when you start hitting that nine o'clock, nine thirty, is when a lot of brokers are gonna start doing their calling. And <clears throat> By calling, what I mean is, and every day is different for a broker. Every day is different. So some days calling is going to be exclusively to carriers. Uh, reaching out to see who can help you uh, with a truck for one of the shipments that you're doing. Reaching out to, you know, current customers to try and, you know, get a, a additional shipments. Letting them know current status. Uh, just calling. A lot of the job of being a freight broker is being on the phone. This is a fast-paced industry. And, you know, the best way to go about it is to pick up the phone. Um, so, once the, ma the main part of the day starts rolling, you know, people are on the phone making phone call after phone call. It's not uncommon for a broker to make 60 to 100 plus phone calls a day. Uh, after calling, maybe securing more shipments, getting the status of loads, uh, getting back proof of delivery for shipments, a lot of brokers will spend a decent or a portion of their day doing paper, uh, whether that be contracts to set up new customers, contracts to set up new carrier partners, um, doing invoicing to get paid from the customer or just updating load information into the transportation management system that basically lets their company know what's going on with their shipments or putting in documentation into their company's prospecting system. Um, a decent amount of time during the day is spent just doing paperwork, making sure that, you know, I's are dotted, T's are crossed, back to calling. So, you know, during your day, you're going to be going through you know, reaching out to doing paperwork, to reaching out to people reaching out to you. It's just a constant barrage of different things going on. But one thing that's going to be consistent is you're going to be on the phone. So after paperwork, back to calling. If you don't have business, you should be on the phone. If you do have business, you should be on the phone. You should always be on the phone anytime that you're not. If you're not doing anything to facilitate the money that you're making, you should be making more money. And you make money by picking. After that, towards mid end of the day, a lot of brokers are going to be doing check ins again, just following back up on the carriers, seeing how things are going, uh, trying to wind down their day. After that, uh, interruptions. You're going to have interruptions throughout the whole day, um, but a good amount of the majority of your interruptions are going to happen in that middle part of your day. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is probably when you're going to be dealing with the most amount of uh, fire. Because it's just it's just a good time where people are up and they're moving and, you know, they're bringing things up. So things that may have happened the night before, things that are happening right now, it's usually the time where you're going to find out about things and you're going to have to deal with them. So you just got to be prepared that little fires are going to pop up and you got to put them out. Uh, rate quotes. So good brokers do their quotes at the end of the day. Um, and that's because during the day they're trying to make money. And quotes, quotes, I, it may sound like an oxymoron, but the people that have cut their teeth on prospecting and landing new customers will know what I mean. Quotes don't make you money. And you got to understand what you're why your customer is requesting a quote from you and where they are in the buying process because you can spend a lot of time quoting and never get anything out of it. I've seen agents quote customers 20, 30 times and not get one shipment from them. And it's because they aren't doing a proper job of identifying what that customer needs and what they are looking for and they are letting that customer use them almost as like an informational tool without ever getting any type of value or establishing any type of 
real relationship with that customer. So rate quotes are typically something that happen near the end of the day uh, because it's just a um, rule of thumb for time management if you are focused on establishing consistent business. And I'll go into that further when I start doing videos on customer acquisition and quoting rates and, and going over things. So after that, uh, prospecting, good brokers prospect at the end of the day. And what I mean by prospecting is generating those leads, um, figuring out who you're going to contact, um, identifying new opportunities. You do that at the end of the day. During, during prime time, you got to be on the phone. The phone is how you make money. When, you, when you're doing research, when you're responding to clients, if it's not going to generate money today, then you put it towards the end of the day and you manage your time wisely. So prospecting is something that should be done at the end of the day because it allows you to do your proper research to be prepared for the next day so that when prime time hits, you're on the phone reaching out to prospects and not researching them. After that, calling again. This is a 24-7 business. And like I said, the successful ones are on the phone. Um, a lot of your clients, if they're, depending on the industry, they're still going to be in the office later on in the day. So pick up the phone, reach out to them, and that might be the best time to reach them when things are a little bit slower. Um, so they're calling again. And then after that, um, when they're really winding down, they're doing the next day prep again. Like I said, this is a long-term business. This is something that you have to be in for a long-term grind. And the best of the best plan at the beginning of the day and then plan at the end of the day. That end of the day planning is all of those things that I was just talking about as far as, you know, rate quotes, prospecting, reaching back out. But it's also just, you know, planning out the next day, um, planning out the rest of your week, and maybe even taking a little bit of time to consider you know, what your goals are for, you know, the month and the quarter. Um, and then figuring out what you can be doing currently to reach that. So that's a typical day in the life of a freight broker. And as we get deeper into it, I'll go, I'll go more in depth on each of those subjects. And hopefully we'll be able to give a lot of really good insight as to what each of those process really looks like from a deep dive perspective, but this is just meant to be an overall explanation.